Now, it's not enough to be a sassy. And why is that? Well, think about it. To really work from home, it's great that we can connect to SaaS application. But we still have on-prem data and on-prem legacy application, right? We call them private application. So let, let's draw that. So here's my traditional data center. And you know, I'm gonna have some application, you know. Uh, for me, it's my ERP system is still on-prem and I still have a lot of data on-prem, right? So this is the, the DC, the traditional data center, right? And that's what we call private apps. Okay, so we want Joe to also connect from home to these private apps. How do we do that? Well, traditionally, Joe would use a VPN, virtual private network. Here's the problem with the VPN. Actually, let me tell you a story. You know, when the COVID-19 crisis started, you know, we work with a very large retailer in the US. We're talking like million plus employees all going home, all these Joes are going home at the same time. Guess what happened to the VPN? Kaboom, right? The VPN went down. So we need a VPN as a service. We need something that can scale elastically, right? Uh, in our tech jargon, we call it ZTNA. So I'm gonna put it here in the cloud. It's kind of a re VPN replacement, zero trust network access. So one aspect of this VPN replacement is, right, is that it scales, right? Because you can think about it as a side-to-side -side VPN versus you know, millions of dedicated tunnels going to your VPN, right? So much more scalable intrinsically. That's one aspect. The other aspect is basically, remember the week that we had before, right? Joe doesn't want to be on the VPN for private apps and the web browser, right, for the SaaS apps, it just, his head is gonna explode. It's a bad user experience. So what we want is Joe to be able to access any app, private or public, exactly the same way, through the web browser. So the ZTNA actually provide a better user experience, right, that's the second value, because Joe is just launching the browser, and it sounds like these old apps on-prem, now they're like SaaS application, great. Now they're modern. But you know what, these two things, scale and uh, ease of use, it's important, but that's not the real reason why you want to look at ZTNA. The real reason is security. You see, VPN is a network construct, right? It's not a, a security element, right? It doesn't have security built in. Quite the opposite. If you remember the bad guys we talked about in the, in the first story, right? They love VPN. In fact, they go after all the vulnerabilities in the VPN because if they can compromise the VPN, they are in. They have access to the entire corporate network. Right, so VPN vulnerabilities are the hardest vulnerabilities, right, in security. All the nation states, you know, they, they, they'll, pay, they'll pay big money to, uh, to, fall, to basically chase these uh, vulnerabilities. So this is really about security, right? And one form of security is like, let's not grant Joe access to the whole network, but you know, let's do it one by, you know, app per app, right? So we limit, so if Joe gets broken, right, we limit what the bad guys would be able to access. It's called least privilege access control. ZTNA does that, very cost control. What else do we want to do? Well, we want to put all the other control, right, around, around the ZTNA. In our case, by the way, we had more control because this is not just about web. So we actually added firewall as a service, next gen firewall as a service in the cloud as well. Why? Well, first of all, because Joe doesn't have a good firewall at home, so he needs one in the cloud for sure. Second, some of these Joes at home, they are power user. They are system administrators. They might be DevOps people, right? SRE is trying to connect to the cloud infrastructure. So they're gonna do more than web browsing. They're gonna do Telnet, SSH, RDP. So we wanna protect all port and protocol. We wanna enable Joe to connect on all port and protocol when he needs to, but we want that security. Right, so we, we brought these two components together, integrated, VPN replacement, firewall as a service, now you can see the whole security stack. And then, you know, this is why we launched earlier, and that's the yang of the SASE. If the ying is the cloud security yang, if the ying is the cloud security gateway, 
the yang is what we call private access, the fourth point private access, the firewall as a service, and the zero trust network access. Okay, that's what we launched. But we're not going to stop there. We talk about putting all the security control. So in particular, remember what is Joe going to do when he connects to SAP and all these on-prem apps? He is going to move data here. So we are going to want, for sure, we're going to want our cloud DLP here. We haven't done it yet, but we're going to do it very quickly. So I'm going to put dot, dot, dots. But we want cloud DLP because that old app now sure looks like Office 65. So we want the same control. And you'll see I also add the granular CASB control, right? Very soon. You want to treat that on-prem app as a SaaS app. And now that's the strength. So when you're looking at VPN replacement, you want to make sure you also get this you know, pristine security control. Otherwise, what's the point? Okay. Now that's the magic of private access. And remember, it's not enough to do it in the cloud. You also need the endpoint element. You will want to protect the private data from on-prem with the DLP agent as well. And that is the magic of private access. And when you take cloud security gateway and private access together, now, now you have a complete end-to-hand -end holistic secure access service edge. Now you have the SASE.